Chapters of Bellingham and Whatcom County. Founded in 1920, the League is a nonpartisan organization with more than 700 affiliates in all 50 states. Our goal is are to encourage informed and active participation in government, increase an understanding of our major public policy issues, and influence public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses candidates or political parties, and uh, membership is open to people of all, to all people aged 16 and older, and we would invite you all to join. Tonight's forum is being broadcast on BTV and the City of Bellingham YouTube channel. Recordings of the program will be available on the League of Voters of Bellingham Whatcom County website, which is lwvbellinghamwhatcom.org, and at the City of Bellingham YouTube channel. The forum is going to be rebroadcast on BTV and on 102.3 KMRE Community Radio up through Election Day, November 8th. So no portion of this forum may be broadcast in full or in part without the written consent of the League of Women Voters. Questions for the forum have been, um, have been prepared in advance by the League, and we have solicited public input for that. Um, and, who, um, and we will hope that you will be focusing your answers directly on our questions. The Cascade Daily News, Linden Tribune, Salish Current, the Northern Light, and 102.3 KME, KMRE Radio Media are our media partners. And tonight we are hosting the Washington State 42nd Legislative District Senate race. The Washington State Senate is made up of 49 members, one from each uh, di legislative district in the state. Half of the membership of the Senate is elected at the general election in November every um, even numbered year. During the legislative session, the legislature is called upon to enact or reject legislation affecting public policy in the state, provide the key provide the levy and collection of taxes and other revenues to support state government and assist local government and appropriate funds for these proposed purposes. The Senate also has the exclusive power to confirm gubernatorial appointments. And although laws are enacted only when the legislature is convened in formal session, policy issues and the general operation of the state and local government are under continuous review by legislators serving on permanent and interim study committees. Washington State Senators are a four-year term and their annual salary is $57,876. So I'd like now to introduce and welcome our candidates, Simon Sefcik and Sharon Shoemake. Here are the rules tonight. Um, each candidate is going to have 90 seconds to respond to each question. Then, your, then uh, you will each have a one-minute closing statement, which I will give you, uh, let you know when that's coming up. And each candidate has a challenge card. Um, you guys hold up your cards so we can all see, know that you have your cards. And yep, <laughs> great, good job. And um, so the challenger has 30 seconds to state his or her challenge and the challenged candidate has a 30 second opportunity to respond. And I will ask the, um, I'm gonna ask you to speak in alphabetical order and then I'm gonna alternate back and forth who goes first. Um, the timer on display on the screen where we can all see that um, is going to count down your time. The timer is going to be purple when you begin like it is now, then it'll turn yellow when there's 15 seconds left. And then when the time is up, it's going to turn red. So, um, and we may cut your microphone if you continue to go on. So are there any questions regarding the rules? Okay, good. Okay. And um, if, and so if our timer is ready, we're going to go ahead and start. All right. So I'm going to start um, with candidate Sefcik. Um, What are the most important challenges facing our state and how do you propose to address them? Well, Rebecca, thank you so much for hosting this. Thank you to Representative Shoemake uh, as well. And thank you, everybody that's watching. Uh, my name is Simon Sefcik. I'm your state senator here in the 42nd Legislative District. And the top priorities for me are the same priorities that 
uh, I championed during the legislative session, which is the goal of returning affordability, restoring public safety, and rebuilding accountability in our government. I think that each one of you are tasked with making a decision this coming November. It's a decision about whether you're going to vote for the policies of the past, or it's a decision to embrace the politics of the future. Uh, I think that the people of Washington State right now are hurting. Eight taxes have been passed, 22 of them since 2018, that impose burdens on middle class families. Things are getting more and more difficult for our police and law enforcement to do their job. And the bottom line is these policies are only going to get worse if we continue to empower the people that cause the problem with the solution which is why I think we need to reduce our taxes. We need to restore the ability of police to do their job. We need emergency powers reform, and we need to make sure that our county is ready in the case of a flood occurring next November, which is why I was proud to work uh, to champion funding for flood victims, and I'd be happy to do that again in the next legislative session if that's necessary. Great, thanks. Um, candidate Shoemake, want me to repeat it or? Okay. No, I've got it. Thank you. You bet. Thank you so much. I'm Sharon Shumake. I'm the only economist in the legislature. And I'd say that some of the top priorities, some of the top issues facing our state are one is inflation and especially the cost of housing. It's one of the biggest drivers in people's budgets. We've got to figure out how to build more, especially in cities where the jobs are, where people want to live, where it's an environmental solution. And when we build in cities, we also protect rural areas because we don't. when Bellingham doesn't build enough, it means that people drive until they qualify and they bid up properties in Ferndale and Everson all the way up to Point Roberts and Sumas. I also think that regular people pay too much in taxes. I wanna cut taxes on working people without cutting services by making sure that the super wealthy pay their fair share. We wanna make sure that we continue to have great schools in Washington state. And we wanna make sure that we're building on some work that we're doing in mental health and other issues. Public safety is a big issue right now. We need to make sure that we have a public safety program that has the mental health, that has the law enforcement, that has the courts and an economy that works for everyone all working together. Flooding and other climate related disasters are gonna be worse as we go forward. And we gotta figure out how do we not just make sure that we're better protecting our communities, but we're also making sure that people have the resources they need to recover. Finally, I wanna to continue to build on the green reputation and reality of Washington state by continuing our work on climate, salmon restoration and other environmental issues. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're going to go with um, candidate Shoemake um, on the next question first, and that is homelessness has increased in Washington state due to multiple factors, one of which is rising rents. What role do you think state government can play, if any, in addressing housing instability due to raising, rising rent costs? So housing is one of the things that I want to spend the next four years on. We know that if rent is $1,800 a month, it's a lot easier to become homeless than if it's $300 a month. And so these two, two things are intimately tied. It's not the only thing we have to do to address homelessness, but it's without doing that, addressing homelessness, ending homelessness in Whatcom County is so much more difficult. So I had a bill last session that would have allowed for an accessory dwelling unit, an ADU or a garden cottage on every single family home in cities and with some exceptions for being in environmentally sensitive areas. That's not the end all be all, but it's a step in making sure that we figure out how to deregulate our overregulated housing market, that we can build more in cities and that we can build things that are affordable. We can return these modest forms of housing that you used to see. Someone said to me the other day, they were looking on Redfin and they're like, where are the starter homes? Where are the small two bedrooms that aren't a whole super fancy? Where are those where people can get a first leg up? So I want to work on looking at our land use laws and especially figuring out how to build more in cities. But also let's look at our condo liability rules and figure out what do we need? What are the barriers that exist to be able to build condos, which can also be that first step? Um, there's a number of other regulations, and I want to go bit by bit and figure out what still protects our values and the things that we love about Whatcom County, and what are rules that are left over from the 1960s and just don't make sense anymore. Thank you. Um, candidate um, Sefcik, do you want me to repeat the question? No, thank you, Rebecca, but okay. thank you for the offer. Mm -hmm. 
I really appreciate the question, and it is important to separate sometimes the discussion that we have about homelessness and housing, but the two are oftentimes related. Uh, you know, I think the first step to solving any problem is to recognize that we have one. Uh, when it comes to homelessness, you know, when, when we drive through Bellingham or downtown Bellingham or on the Guide Meridian, I'm sure all of you see the, the problem that's growing. And when the average cost of a home in Whatcom County is $650,000, that's extraordinarily problematic. You know, for me, housing is personal. Uh, I think I'm one of the only renters in the Washington State Senate, uh, and I grew up in Whatcom County, but I don't own a home. I want to be able to purchase a home someday, and like thousands of other people here, you know, we've grown up here, but the odds of us being able to purchase a home seem to slip further and further away. And so, in terms of our housing policy, we do need to deregulate. The fact of the matter is that 23.8% of housing costs alone uh, come from permitting and the consequences of delayed permitting fees in Washington state. That's a huge problem. And every single year, it seems like the majority party votes for a new regulation that adds to that permitting difficulty that increases the cost of housing. So I'm, I'm glad that my opponent and I agree we need to work towards deregulating, which is why I'm curious why for the past four years, housing costs have increased and regulations have increased that have made these problems worse and worse. I think it's why we need to streamline our permitting process and look at making amendments to the Growth Management Act and the Shoreline Management Act as well. Okay, thank you. This uh, next one is going to go to you now, um, uh, Rep, uh, excuse me, candidate Sefcik. Um, what further legislation should the legislature adopt to both mitigate the effects of climate change and to help people adapt to what is already um, a changing climate? Well, thank you again for the question, Rebecca. I think that question is something that's on a lot of our minds. You know, how do we uh, make up for sort of this idea of a just transition as our economy is moving and transitioning to uh, cleaner energy? Uh, the question is, how do we do so in a way that doesn't leave people behind? You know, I'm, I'm proud to have the endorsements, for example, of, of the local laborers union and the operating engineers union, uh, because they're worried at times that sometimes if, if we go too far in some of these efforts, we're going to end up pricing people out of their homes. And so I think, you know, the legislature has made some strategic steps. Uh, we did so this year. I voted for some of those laws. Uh, but my big concern is every single new energy mandate that gets passed oftentimes, you know, trying to mandate a net electric housing by 2030, for example, what does that end up doing? That ends up limiting the supply again of things like, like housing, which make it more and more expensive for people, especially in the middle class and lower income categories to be able to get by. And so my big concern is that at times our answers to these problems end up making it more and more difficult for us to make that transition in the end. Now, of course, you know, there have been laws that have been passed, like the Climate Commitment Act, that work on making uh, us closer and bring us closer to those carbon goals. But the overall question is, how do we do this in a just and reasonable fashion? And I think at times, quite frankly, the legislature goes too far and ends up making life more and more unaffordable for the average family in Washington state. Okay. Candidate Shoemaker, would you like me to repeat that? Nope, I got it. Okay, thank you. Climate change is real man-made and worth addressing. I teach clean climate economics because I think that's a big part of how we fix this. Energy mandates, we know, save money in the long term. They are one of the most cost-effective ways to reduce CO2 emissions and, frankly, protect consumers. When it gets really hot or really cold on some day, you're glad that there's insulation in your house. It's only builders that are really opposed to this because they see it as digging into some of their upfront costs, and even then, not all of the builders. I know a lot of builders that build green because they believe in it. And that's why I've been endorsed by both affordable housing advocates and environmental groups. So as to what we need to do, we did the big pieces. We should be proud of that as Washingtonians. The Climate Commitment Act guides us towards net zero, but we have a lot of building to do in building this green economy. Some of our permitting just doesn't work right now. And we know that we need to build big transmission lines and we need to build a whole lot of green energy. And we wanna do it in a way that doesn't harm communities in the same way our last building boom did. So I've been endorsed by the Sierra Club. I've been endorsed by Washington conservation voters. I've been wanting to figure out how to do climate climate work cost effectively in a way that we get win win wins. And I've done that in the legislature and often bipartisanly, where climate is one of the most difficult things to get Republicans to actually work with you on. All right, thank you. This next question is going to start with you also, um, candidate Shoemake. 
Um, if, if elected to the Senate, what next steps, if any, would you support for Washington State after the Dobbs v. Jackson women's health decision overturning Roe v. Wade regarding women's reproductive health? Thank you for this question. So I am pro-choice. I do not think politicians should get, be getting in between the decisions of a woman and her doctor. We did a lot of the work in 1851, which my opponent voted against, so that codified abortion, and that made sure that reasonable people who can do this safely are able to do that so we can expand access. Um, one in three American women have gotten an abortion. We cannot criminalize this activity. That is really important to realize when you hear someone talking about being pro-life. That means that they think that one in three women has done something that's against the law. I think that's terrible. Going forward, I do support a constitutional amendment. I think the people would support that. We'd have the votes, but we don't have the votes in the legislature, which is why it's so important to elect pro-choice majorities. Okay, thank you. Um, would you like me to repeat that question? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have to first acknowledge that this is a difficult and sensitive conversation. And uh, I believe in the value of all human life. Uh, the voters have been clear about this issue uh, so far uh, in the state of Washington. And my campaign is focused on those major categories, affordability, public safety, and accountability. Now, when it comes to that bill, Representative Shumake just mentioned, uh, House Bill 1851, uh, of course, there were several problems that, that I have with, with the bill, namely in the way that uh, certain categories were defined. Uh, for example, that bill expanded beyond the original wording of the initiative of the people in Washington state uh, who can perform abortion services beyond just a physician, and it expanded it to uh, physician assistants, advanced registered nurse practitioners, and several other medical categories that weren't even defined in the bill and that weren't even defined you know, by the Department of health in the interpretation of that bill. And so I think that brings us even out of what the people of Washington have established in the past. And if, if the mantra is safe, legal, rare, I think 1851 uh, took us beyond that in the state of Washington. Okay. Okay. All right. We have a challenge. So you have 30 minutes, 30 seconds, I beg your pardon, to um, make your challenge. <laughs> Yeah, I want to hear more about Simon still didn't answer the question. He does this every single time. He says it's a difficult and sensitive subject, and then he goes off on technicalities. I want to hear if he's going to respect a woman's right to choose, and if he doesn't want to respect a woman's right to choose, what are the limits and what are the caveats of that? You have 30 seconds to respond. We're going to get that timer. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Well, I, of course, I say that it is a difficult and sensitive topic because it is a difficult and sensitive topic. Uh, so I'll, I'll certainly reiterate that. You know, in terms of uh, where that that line is drawn, like I said, I disagree with the legislature uh, from 1851 in this decision. I think that it, it went too far, and that's why it was a no vote on that specific bill. Uh, and and for the reasons I provided above, the definitions are important, Representative Shoemaker, and they weren't defined in that bill. Okay, that goes fast, doesn't it? Your 30 seconds, you guys. Um, all right, we're gonna move on to the next topic, which is uh, criminal justice. And um, I'm gonna start with um, candidate Sefcik. If elected, what efforts would you support to protect public safety? Well, Rebecca, thank you so much for the question. Uh, I'm proud to have the sole endorsement of the Washington State Fraternal Order of Police, of WACOPS, of our local sheriff here, Bill Elfo. And it's because Representative Shoemake voted for some of the most extreme anti-police laws in the country in 2021, and we're paying the price for it. Representative Shoemake says that she listens to the experts, but when all the experts were in the room asking her to vote no, she didn't listen to them, followed party leadership, and voted to handicap law enforcement. So what I think we need to do, I think we need to reauthor police pursuits. I think we need to address the failures of the Blake decision by adding the word knowingly to our drug statutes. I think we need to increase the amount of law enforcement officers that we hire, and we have to stop this mentality that police are the bad guys. Uh, furthermore, I think we need to build a, a jail facility in Whatcom County that's of an adequate size that also addresses the mental health components and drug components that are oftentimes part of this conversation. But here's what I know. Our public safety 
crisis is continuing to grow. And Representative Shoemake, now that she's running for re-election, is claiming uh, to be a, a voice for public safety. But if you talk to literally any of your police chiefs in the towns that you live in, they will tell you that Representative Shoemake let them down and let you as a member of the public down when it came to the issue of public safety. We have laws that make no sense right now because the majority party chose to put politics above people. That has to end, and it's what I'm committed to doing. Uh, candidate Shoemake, do you like that repeated or? Okay. Go ahead. Simon Sevzik wants to go back to the world of chokeholds and a failed drug war. This is a nationwide crisis. And when we look at a nationwide crisis, you have to explain this as, you can't explain this as something that just happened in Olympia. His strategists know this. They encourage their politicians in Texas to talk about crime, to talk about inflation as a way to attack Democrats. I'm proud to be endorsed by the top law enforcement officer in Whatcom County, the Teamsters who represent those who work in the jail, but also social workers, because they are also part of the system. Public safety is a system. We have to figure out what are the people that we need. We have to figure out how to recruit more law enforcement, hopefully very well-trained law enforcement, which we do an excellent job of in Washington state. We also have to figure out how to recruit more corrections officers and more behavioral health officers. We need to figure out places. So we do need to build more mental health care facilities, especially secure detox and secure mental health beds, as well as a new jail that can protect people. We have to make sure that our court is working efficiently and we have to solve homelessness in Whatcom County, as well as, well as building an economy that works for everything. I want to start from reducing criminality where it starts. That means really good schools. That means really good early learning. And that means really good, well-paying, protected jobs. OK, thank you. And we have a challenge here. So you have 30 seconds to make your challenge. Not only is that an incredibly offensive thing to say, it's an incredibly silly thing to say. Uh, that is not what I'm advocating for. Uh, that's never what I've advocated for. What I have said is that when individuals engage in violent crime, our police officers should be allowed to follow them in vehicles and keep all of us safe. I'd like okay. to ask Representative Shoemake. Uh, if she's willing to say that she thinks fentanyl should be treated as a felony possession and why she thinks that not a single law enforcement organization uh, has supported her. Why hasn't the sheriff supported her? Why hasn't the Fraternal Order of Police supported her or walk cops? Okay. It's a good question. We have 30 seconds to respond here. So I do not believe in returning to the failed drug war. I think that we should treat, I've had family members that have suffered from addiction and some have not made it and some have made it. And it is incredibly difficult to deal with. We need to treat this the same way we do mental health. Because when you give someone a felony, it follows them for the rest of their life. It means they can't get a job. It means they can't get a house. It often means that they can't visit their children at school. That is not protective. That does not work. And we know this over and over and over again. That is not soft on crime. That is smart on crime. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to start this time with, rep, uh, with uh, candidate Shoemake. Correct. So um, what I we'd like to know is, do you support ranked cho choice? Do you support ranked choice voting? Why or why not? Yes, I do support ranked choice voting. I think we need to do a lot of voter education before we get it out there. But I think one of the things that you'll see in my interactions with Simon is there's so much negative partisanship right here. And I don't think that's what voters want to hear. I think voters want to hear solutions. I think voters want to hear ideas. And I think voters want us to work together across parties. I am proud of the bipartisan work that I've done in the state house. And I've been an effective legislator going forward. I continue to be an effective legislator. We're going to steer you back to ranked choice voting, though, if you could. One of the things that's great about ranked choice voting is instead of having us fight against each other, it encourages us to work with each other. So if you're the first person and then I'm this, and I think that um, I don't necessarily want to attack you, I want to be your number two. It also means that we can have third party candidates. And one of the things that's really important to me is I don't know what my kids are going to want in the future. I don't know what our cultural and economic discussions that we're going to be having. And I want to make sure that our party system can move beyond Republicans and Democrats to things that the next generation is really going to value and hold dear. Thank you. All right, candidate um, Sefcik, do you want me to repeat that? I'm, I'm good. Thank you there, Rebecca. Okay, Appreciate thank that. you. 
In, in terms of ranked choice voting, to be honest, this is something that I need to look into more and, and study to understand better. You know, my understanding is that there are some areas where this has worked fairly successfully and other areas where it might not work as well. Uh, and so I need to spend more time to, to understand this issue better. I'm not a member on the uh, elections committee in the Senate, so I haven't been a part of as many of those conversations, but I certainly look forward and I know uh, there's a, a group that does ranked choice voting that has uh, some booths all over Whatcom County, different events. So I've enjoyed chatting to some of those folks, need to do so more. I certainly do agree that we need more bipartisanship in the legislature. I do have a more bipartisan record than uh, Representative Shoemake does, but I, I agree that uh, that should be our goal. And uh, maybe ranked choice voting is, is a way to get us there. Maybe it's not. Again, we need to, to look into it more. Um, of course, one of the reasons we see such negativity in politics is when you come out with wild statements like, I believe in chokeholds for our law enforcement officers. I don't believe in that. Uh, but I do think we know some of what our children want in the future. Our children want an environment that's healthy. Our children want an area that is safe. Our children want an economy that works for everybody and that is affordable. And those are things that we can work for and make decisions about right here, right now, so that our children and our grandchildren, grandchildren can grow up in a Whatcom County that works for them. And that's, that's what I'm focused on as well. Okay, thanks. All right, we're going to start with you now again on that next question. Um, the, the Institute of Ta on Taxation and Economic Policy has rated Washington state tax structure as the most regressive in the country. What, if any changes, would you support to Washington's tax structure if elected? And that, yes. Yeah. Oh, this is me? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, yes, Washington State does have a fairly regressive uh, tax system. And, you know, that's why actually there is an initiative process that I've been uh, getting people to, to sign on to that uh, cuts the sales tax by about 1% here in the state because the sales tax is obviously a very regressive type of tax. My understanding uh, is that Representative Shoemake uh, has said she's in favor of that as well. I haven't seen any legislation from her to do that. Uh, and I hope she'd sign some of those initiatives with me uh, to, and get others to as well. Uh, but, you know, there's other types of regressive taxes. I had a bill, for example, to suspend the state gas tax to save the the people of Washington state about 50 cents per gallon of gas. Uh, and I think that would be a way to, again, ease up on people that are really feeling the pain at the pump right now. Uh, I know Representative Shoemake says that she's not in favor of a state income tax, uh, but she voted in favor of the capital gains income tax that's recently been found by a Douglas County Superior Court judge to be unconstitutional. Uh, so she made a promise to the voters of Whatcom County in 2018 and in 2020 that she would not support an income tax. And then a few months later in 2021, Representative Shoemake voted for one. I think that's very problematic. Look, you can be in favor of an income tax, you can be opposed to it, but at the very least, buckle down on a position and stick to it. Don't flip flop with the voters. That's what the people of Whatcom County are tired of. Okay, candidate Shoemake, would you like me to repeat the question? Okay. Here he goes again. It's like Groundhog Day with this guy. All he can talk about is the definition of what an income tax is, as if that's what people really care about. What people care about is they want their taxes lower and they do want good schools. They do want good social services, which is why I was happy to vote for something that you don't pay until you make over a quarter of a million dollars in one year selling stocks. Not working, selling stocks. And we exempted a lot of stuff out of that capital gains tax. What we did in the last legislative session is also really important. So I cut, we expanded the BNO tax exemptions. So now people, small businesses making up to $125,000 a year don't need to file. We increased the exemptions on the BNO tax. And we did this all while make, making sure that we have money in our reserves to deal with what we know is going to be a very uncertain economic outcome. Furthermore, in previous sessions, I have cut taxes for working people, for people whose homes are selling for less than 1.5 million. And you know what we did is we actually ended up raising more money because we increased it for homes that are more than 1.5 million. And yes, that threshold changes over time. So hopefully we can get our housing market under control, but if we're all in $1.5 million homes, we'll all be getting that tax cut from the real estate excise tax. Going forward, I think we need to do some good work in making sure that, again, we're continuing to fund schools, but I want to look at expansions for the senior tax credit, for the senior property tax exemption, and look at expansions for everyone to have a property tax exemption to lower taxes on regular people while letting the billionaires pay their fair share. Okay, thank you. We're getting close on our time. I'm going to give you your last question. And... Um, 
here we go. And we're going to start with um, candidate Shoemake. Are there any legislative measures that you would support or propose to keep children safer from school shootings in our public schools? Yeah, so one of the things we did last session was the high capacity machine gun ban. Um, the machine cartridge, sorry, um, high capacity magazines, messing it all up. Um, so one of the reasons that's really important is that we see during a school shooting, fewer people die if the shooter has to reload. I think that's common sense and there was good research on that. I have two kids in school. I, I, I don't even know what would happen to me when there was that scare in Blaine. It was scary for all the mothers in Whatcom County. We have to figure out how to solve this problem. There are some things we can do in the meantime. That means if you go to my kid's school, you'll see that there's one entrance. And so we're able to control who goes in and out of that school. I'm glad that we have that, but it's depressing that we got here, that we can't have more productive discussions about how to keep people safe. So going forward, I think we need to do a lot of stuff, continuing to update schools. Sometimes people talk about mental health, but if you look at the people that did this, I don't, I, I absolutely support more mental health, but some of these kids were depressed and didn't fit in. I don't wanna criminalize that. I don't think that makes any sense. So we've gotta figure out a way to keep guns away from dangerous people. But if you still need them for protection, if you still need them for hunting, being able to maintain that. Okay, thank you. All right, um, candidate Sussex, did you have, do you, want, do you wanna go ahead and give us an answer about how you'd make public schools safer? Yes, thank you, Rebecca. And, and of course, I am first going to touch and say, Rep. Schumick, the statement that no one cares about the definition of an income tax is shocking coming from an economics professor. That is extraordinarily relevant. I'm going to move you back to our gun, uh, to, to the issue on school safety. Sure. So when it comes to school safety, I do agree with Representative Schumick that uh, improvements can be made to the designs of schools in order to keep uh, children and students safer. And I think that's uh, something that we need to look into make, to make sure that doors are locked, that there's a clear entrance exit system, that the guests that go into schools are clearly marked, identified, uh, being tracked and registered. Uh, I don't think uh, a universal ban and seizure of uh, semi-automatic firearms is a reasonable approach, and I'm not sure that it will keep children safer. That is our goal, though. We have to keep our children safer, and it's heartbreaking to see what's going on in Whatcom County, you know, to see uh, young young people that are addicted to drugs, for example, and the only thing a Bellingham PD officer can do is give a business card warning them not to do it again. That's not a humane approach either. And so we have to think about public safety holistically in the way that we have this conversation. And there are steps that we need to make to ensure that our children are equipped uh, for the future and the education that they received, that our, our schools are safe, and that we are truly holding up to our promise to serve the next generation. That's why I decided to run for office, because I think a new energetic and empathetic voice is badly needed in Whatcom County. And that's why I'd be honored to have your vote. Okay, thank you. Gosh, you guys just went so fast. It's now it's time for your closing <laughs> closing comments already. We're going to start with candidate Sefcik. You have one minute to make your closing argument well, statement. Thank you. <laughs> And again, thank you to everybody that, that's watched this. I think you've seen a clear distinction between myself and my opponent. Uh, you've seen from an economics professor and a sitting legislator the claim that the definition of an income tax is irrelevant. Our constitution prohibits an income tax. I'm absolutely, as a legislator, concerned about definitions and case law. I will follow the facts and the data, even if they lead us to uncomfortable conclusions. Rather than merely following along to party leadership more than 97% of the time, like my opponent, I truly do want to hear both sides to an issue. That's why I'm honored and I'm proud that I was uh, supported and have Democrat and Republican endorsements because I want to work across the aisle to bring people together. I feel that my voting record has done that. But here's what I know. We cannot empower the same people that caused our failures with the fix. And that's why we need new leadership in Whatcom County. That's why I'm running to be your next state senator. Thank you all. Thank you. Candidate Shoemake, your closing statement, please. I am an economist. I'm the only economist in the legislature, and I've been working on an economy that works for everything. One of the things that I also think is really important about me is that I'm honest. You may not always like what I say, and sometimes I definitely stick my foot in my mouth, but I really do try and give you the truth. It's my nature as a researcher, as an educator, and I think it's what you should expect from your politicians. 
I believe in a better politics, like, you know, what you see on West Wing, right? Deep policy discussions, not division and sniping. So a newspaper recently checked an early debate with me and um, Simon Sevcik, and of the five statements they fact checked, only one came out as true. With me, it was every single statement. Recently, the Cascadia Daily News endorsed me and they said she leaves no chance for confusion on her position on women's reproductive rights. They called Simon out of step with preponderance of local voters on issues. Look, Simon's a good debater, but he hasn't been a successful senator because he doesn't work well with others. I do. That's why I've been endorsed by nurses, teachers, the top law enforcement officials, social workers, environmentalists, Thank and you. Many, many others. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, I do, I want to thank the candidates for being here today and for your interest in running for public office. Uh, voters can find more information about the candidates online at 411.vote411.org and in your voter pamphlet. The ballots are going to be mailed October 19th, and your ballots have to be postmarked or in a ballot drop box before 8 p.m. on November 8th. So please remember to sign the ballot envelope. If you're mailing by postal service, we recommend that you mail it early. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rebecca.